going to floodlight that business model. We've got to take Monsanto and floodlight that business model and just share it. We've got to, we've got to go across the whole, what I see is a whole wheel of our relationships. You know, so I have a relationship with food. I eat food. Who do I do business with or who do I trade with to, to get food or, or how do I, maybe I do it myself. I don't know. So who, now, so what's the level of trust that I have with that entity? Now I use the word entity because they are organic and synthetic entities. And that's a, that's a discernment that we need to do. We don't do it in fear. We do it out of observation and, and you know, simple analysis. <laughs> we analytical thinking beings. We're, we're problem solvers. We are adventurers. We are. Each one of us know, not just the, a few, but every single one of us. And we live in a country if you read the Declaration of Independence that says, you know, all men are created equal. It's an egalitarian country based on its founding documents. But look around. So who's responsible for making all this work? So back to the Declaration, duty, D-U-T-Y, figure out what they're saying there. Read the whole deck. You know, I think I just got to get, I need to get into the street and start reading the Declaration and have copies for people to read with me. I think I just have to do that. <laughs> Anybody want to come out and read the declaration with me? I did I did facilitate a little piece of a session, uh, Revolution 2.0, a friend of mine is driving. Fascinating, Revolution 2.0. The whole idea is that, you know, enough is enough of this craziness. We need to get together and have find ways to have a dialogue, even though we may have different worldviews or political views, or whatever, or different views. How, how can we gather together in dialogue? It's beautiful. Mary Lynn Chiavi, glorious, forward-thinking, critical work, because if we don't do what Revolution 2.0 is, is, is inviting us to do, <laughs> then we crash and burn, because we have to stand up in our power. We have to stand up in our individual sovereign power, and that that we have the right to define what we want in this world, what's important to us, what's most important to us, and then we have a right to, to engage in an adventure to create it, to manifest it, to make it happen, to allow it to arrive. <laughs> All right, so I've gone really, really long. I got to put this into parts, or I get it's it's a ah, but it's fun to do. And so those of you who are you know, with this uh, missile attack or in despair, stand up, feel your heart. This is a fantastic opportunity for us to really discern and filter organic and synthetic. And, and then, in terms of our relationships with those entities, we need to we need to get together in our local communities. This is the only way it's going to happen. Local communities have to physically get together. And look around the wheel, the food, beverage, healthcare, uh, what else? Energy. We gotta look around the wheel, all our relationships, uh, those kinds of relationships. And if we're dealing with a synthetic entity in a transaction, then we, we're feeding it. <laughs> Absolute confidence. So simple. We stand up in our hearts individually and we say, this is what I care about. This is what is sacred to me. This is what I want. And then we look around and there's an amazing agreement at that level. And we say, whoa, okay, brother, sister, let's do it. And we stand up in the power. As we're directed to in the Declaration of Independence, it's our job gotta read that <laughs> it's our duty and I, so I what I see happening now is this we've been standing really interestingly in this country standing rock oh which is just the beginning of a global movement that standing rock is at the epicenter is the epicenter of the great shift the 180 degree shift from fear to compassion it's the epicenter, man. You, if you got to know about that, what's been going on at Standing Rock, 
and what been going on in this country for hundreds of years to a, a native people who, you know, the ships arrived and their whole life changed, who had incredible wisdom because that they had a practice called the oral tradition to bring to 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 share the wisdom across the generations. So each life, you know, someone's born, it's like, wah, you know, you're a baby. And, and then you do some shit and you die. I mean, and that happens in a series in waves, right? <laughs> so the oral tradition says that this is part of the what I've gleaned from listening to wisdom keepers. It's just I gleaned this from them. <laughs> that it's a sacred tradition, tradition, intergenerational, across the generations, to make sure that the wisdom from the last generation, which uh, is captured through oral tradition to the next generation and handed over. So it's, it's the great gift, it's the great responsibility of the elders to, to make sure that that, and you do this over time, what you get is an ancestral wisdom sweet <laughs> and, and it can be boiled down to a very short list of values of an expression of values which each one of us needs to do that but I guess the bottom line and I keep moving on and off but it's just this is who I am is that that this is a critical moment right now the American people are going to buy into this false narrative and cheer on another war or we're going to take what happened in the 60s or in the 70s in Vietnam and turn on acceleration and just without a long prolonged you know frustration thing just show up wherever we need to show up together standing in compassion coming from compassion coming from a world we want to see not opposing anything. Very important. In great numbers, done. It's that simple. So I'm calling for it. I'm not sure what form it's going to take for me, but it's going to take some form soon. This is critical. If this country buys into this false narrative about this attack in Syria, which is... It, my perspective, I can only speak for myself, I hope others see this, which is a strategic move to trigger a world war. Because, I don't know because. One thing I do know, I think it's a, maybe a bunch of things, but one thing I do know is that wars are profitable. And that there are industries that are collaborating together. Matter of fact, it's easy to collaborate industries together when a very few people own them. <laughs> and they're like in this posse. They're in this, they're up in the boardroom with all the puppeteering strings. Uh, so much more to share. I'm going to leave it there. I hope, so we can't approach this with fear. We have to approach this with uh, compassion. And with compassion is appreciation. And it's the same thing. The law of attraction. <laughs> so, I'll leave it there for now. So I want to have conversations about this. <laughs> um, until next time. Take care.